Today's speaker is Dan Olszewski, who is going to talk to us about how the UW-Madison is one of the leaders in teaching and inspiring students interested in entrepre entrepreneurship as a potential career. Dan is director of the Weinert Center for Entrepreneurship at the UW-Madison School of Business. He is a graduate of UW-Madison with a BS degree in economics and computer sciences and has received his MBA from Harvard. He is former CEO and chairman of Parts Now and has also worked for IBM and the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. We look forward to your presentation, Dan, and have made a contribution to the Rotary International Polio Plus Fund on your behalf. Just a reminder that at the end of his presentation, we will have microphones circulating for questions. So please give a warm welcome to Dan. Well, you know, thank you so much. It's a great honor to be invited here. And I would actually I like to say I'm especially, um, uh, especially impactful and, and uh, wonderful to be talking to Rotary uh, because a long time ago, in 1982, uh, when I was uh, up in Own Withy, a group on a, a farm, I was the recipient of um, the scholarship to go to the World Affairs Council uh, that Rotary uh, sponsored in uh, Whitewater, uh, Wisconsin, which for a farm kid in Withy, Wisconsin, was a high point of the summer. And it, it got me out of making hay for a week. So uh, I always uh, viewed it as an incredibly wonderful organization, and you do so many great things uh, here in the world. Well, I want to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, and specifically at the, oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, especially here at the UW, uh, where what we're doing to, to train students uh, in this area, because it is something that we've seen uh, a lot of growth and a, a lot of interest in that. And um, we have a, a couple. Let's see here. Uh, why we're doing entrepreneurship training has a couple different facets. Uh, first off, it, it's really focused on the student, and from a student career standpoint, uh, this has become far more important. Uh, in the 1960s, uh, the average worker worked for four companies before they hit age 65. Today, the average person is, going, is working for eight companies before age 30, and that's speeding up. So their career is being forced to be more entrepreneurial. This lifetime employment doesn't exist if, uh, at all. Okay. And we have, uh, from a company standpoint, you also have a far more dynamic issue there. In the 1960s, if you were on the S&P 500 as a company, your life expectancy to stay on that list was 60 years. Now, to stay on the S&P 500, your life expectancy is 18 years. So even being in a big company doesn't guarantee you're going to be there that long. So our entire economy has become that much more dynamic. Uh, and also, uh, there's, uh, entrepreneurship is a wonderful way of wealth creation. If you look at the Forbes 400, uh, the best two ways to get on that list is to either be an entrepreneur or have the good fortune of having a mother, father, grandfather, grandmother who was an entrepreneur. Uh, that is, you can only control half of that, uh, those two. So uh, if you want to make that list, being an entrepreneur is really one of the best ways uh, to, to do that. Uh, also, from our just societal standpoint, entrepreneurship is where the action's at. If, um, Kaufman uh, did a recent study. If you look back over the last 25 years, basically all net new jobs have come from companies less than five years old. So if you're looking where's the dynamism in the economy, where are the jobs, it's coming from people that are taking that leap to be an entrepreneur. Uh, it, it, plus all the great things that we now have access to because entrepreneurs made that possible. Companies, uh, products, services made possible by entrepreneurship. So all of these are things that we are seeing uh, why we, we believe it's important to teach entrepreneurship. Now, a few questions on entrepreneurship as far as you know, who becomes an entrepreneur. Uh, so we can target this from a student standpoint. And the answer is everybody. Uh, this isn't something that's limited to just business students or people majoring in it. Uh, the walks of life and uh, backgrounds that people come from to be an entrepreneur, wide, wide range. And um, when do they do it? Ironically, if you watch what's in the press, you may think, uh, you know, I haven't dropped out of college and started a business, it's too late. Uh, the data would be quite different. The average entrepreneur starts their first business at age 40, 
around there. So it's not something that's going to happen immediately. It's more of a longer term career uh, aspiration for the vast majority of entrepreneurs. Uh, what type of business is it is also uh, not always a high tech business. Uh, there are people that come up with innovative ideas regarding their business model, regarding a, a new service or product that they're offering a different customer segment, and at the end of the day just probably out hustle and out um, work uh, the competition. So it can come from a, lots of, of different areas. And where this is happening is also different. It's um, a, a lot of big companies and even small companies are working to become more entrepreneurial and trying to get more of that entrepreneurial DNA in the company. So they're hiring our students and want them to have this entrepreneurial training so that they can work in their company and help them innovate, as a, develop new products, develop new services, and be more creative within the company. So we're actually seeing our tools that we're teaching in entrepreneurship being the exact same tools and books uh, that they're using in these Fortune 500 companies as they work to become more innovative. So here at the UW, uh, where we, uh, how we do this uh, is first off through our classes. If you go back uh, to the 1980s, uh, we had uh, professors Pricer, Udell, and Philly who were really pioneers in the teaching of entrepreneurship. We had one of the very first centers and first uh, groups that started teaching uh, this topic, and at the time was called Small Business Management and Entrepreneurship. A lot of people didn't know what the word entrepreneurship meant. Um, I personally have a very difficult time still spelling entrepreneurship, uh, but that's what spell check is for. And it's, uh, they were really early on. And uh, we, that's probably one of our key areas of uh, continuing to uh, educate uh, students is through the classes. What we do in the classes, though, is different. It's typically not just uh, a lecture. Uh, entrepreneurship is really about action. It's about doing and giving students the opportunity to ex what we call experiential learning uh, is key. And we have lots of different ways that we do that in our classes. Our intro entrepreneurship class has a t-shirt project. And you may say, well, you know, t-shirts, oh, there aren't many billionaires that made it in the t-shirt uh, business. And uh, that's true. Uh, it's also interesting when we have alumni come back to campus that have gone and started very large uh, companies, very successful companies, they will often tell a story of, well, when I was in grade school, high school, I had a paper route, I had a lemonade stand. In college, it's often I sold t-shirts. And it's uh, a way that they can figure out a target audience, a target customer, uh, actually design something. There's not a lot of money, capital that ties into it, and they learn to sell and, and sell some more if they actually want to get uh, some action. Uh, get some money uh, from their business. Uh, in this class, uh, each year, we've had at least one team make enough money to pay for what their tuition was for that class. Um, we're very close to some teams making enough money to pay for that entire, uh, their entire semester uh, in profits. And in, in homage to, uh, I guess the mayor was here last week, uh, last spring, the winning uh, t-shirt design was a Make Mifflin Great Again, uh, which, uh, <laughs> uh, kind of uh, sold a lot of t-shirts. Uh, uh, students like that. Uh, we also do a lot of work with our local companies. Uh, to date, we've done over a thousand projects with local firms, uh, that it, consulting projects where they get information. Uh, the students work with them on their business, assessing it, uh, and ideas for improvement, giving them that real life, but still fairly low risk chance uh, to see what entrepreneurs do in their day to day uh, business. Uh, we also work with WARF, the Technology Transfer Office at the UW, on uh, helping uh, do market assessments for different technologies uh, that are coming out of the UW uh, in, in that area. And last but uh, not least, students have their own startup ideas. And so we have classes where they work on their ideas uh, in small teams. We have a fund, the WAVE Fund, which actually allows us to uh, invest in these student startups that are through the WAVE class and take an ownership stake and help them launch uh, those business, businesses. And uh, we also are a huge believer in linking to uh, practitioners. And we have our teaching staff, but we also leverage the community, our alumni base, and each year we'll have over 100 
uh, alumni, mentors uh, come in as judges, as mentors, as uh, guest speakers in all of these areas to help uh, answer students' questions and really give that first-hand knowledge of what it is to be an entrepreneur. Uh, we have all of these are ways we are teaching entrepreneurship, and I'm going to talk about some that are outside of uh, the classroom as well. And I have to preface this with saying I'm just going to touch on a couple examples because there are a whole host of different things that we're doing that, in the interest of time, uh, won't be uh, delving into, uh, but uh, are helping, uh, actually helping start businesses as well uh, that maybe aren't quite as focused on the educational side, but are trying to commercialize more of the ideas coming out of the university, uh, which is a whole other facet, really a whole other talk of the great research uh, that's being done at UW-Madison and converting that into uh, I, I businesses, commercial uh, businesses. Things like D, uh, there's the Discovery to Product. We have a business and entrepreneurship clinic, a law and entrepreneurship clinic uh, that are all working uh, in those areas. And Wharf in, in general also is working to make more of that uh, possible. So these are, um, and Merlin Mentors uh, is another great organization uh, that works to help entrepreneurs uh, out across uh, either the campus or even the region move their ideas forward. Uh, but uh, we won't be talking about all those. I just want to talk about a couple unique e examples of projects and activities uh, that I think you may find interesting and different than uh, may have been the case when you attended uh, school, if you, if you did, or if you attended the UW. Most of these didn't exist. Didn't exist when I was uh, there. Uh, and a fairly recent phenomena. Uh, one event, we have a Wisconsin Entrepreneurship Showcase in the fall. Over 500 students uh, will come in to hear uh, speakers, uh, four speakers over about an hour. So very fast alumni talking about their uh, different uh, entrepreneurial journeys. And that is probably the largest uh, student entrepreneurship event in the state, uh, one of the largest in the nation. And uh, is followed by a uh, high-speed uh, mentoring, uh, where we have 30 tables, 30 entrepreneurs, and the students in small groups every 10 minutes will talk to the entrepreneur, get some career advice, uh, hear their story, uh, ask them some questions, network, and then bell goes off and we shift. And uh, gives the students a chance to meet six different entrepreneurs and really learn, but in some ways, even more importantly, get inspired by the stories of these entrepreneurs and the fact that they're able to what they've done and they usually have a, a great story of how they came up with the idea but they're they're mere mortals <laughs> and uh, they usually portray that of oh, what but they've been able to grow their business and, and inspire the students uh, we also have a distinguished entrepreneurship lunch where each uh, wednesday during the semester we'll have a pizza brought in and uh, about 20 to 30 students will sign up and have a small uh, lunch with uh, an entrepreneur uh, to ask them questions, get feedback on ideas, and learn uh, about their uh, story as well. A another way that the inspiration and uh, knowledge can be passed along from people in the community to uh, our students. We also run a program called the Wisconsin Entrepreneurial Boot Camp. And this is each summer our tar target customers there are uh, students that are getting their PhD in the STEM fields. Really, truly brilliant individuals. I, I can say that because you don't get into the PhD program in medical physics at UW-Madison without having an IQ just way above mine. And you know, smartest, incredibly smart, but most of them, this will be the very first business class they have ever taken. Uh, they, uh, this is all new to them. And the fact that uh, they're gonna learn about, in one week, five 12-hour days, uh, what entrepreneurship is all about, technology entrepreneurship. Uh, Wharf does IP training. Uh, we have uh, John Morgridge, who is the CEO of Cisco, who actually flies out uh, to teach in this class. And the students have the very unique opportunity to have a case, uh, the Cisco case, being taught by John Morgridge, who will refer to himself in the third person of what should Morgridge do uh, in this uh, case. And uh, it really does I uh, said, uh, gets them, inspires the students, and we've seen them go off and, and start uh, lots of, uh, of different things. We also have a business plan competition, which allows students to pitch their idea, get feedback on that idea, and get both positive and negative reinforcement on the idea. There are lots of students that tell a story of 
it, the fact that they won this competition gave them the courage to call their parents to say, I'm turning down that job to do this startup, and, uh, which is not always the easiest conversation uh, for uh, students to do. And uh, at the same time, uh, provides them with some money to kind of get it launched and also a, a vehicle to move into the Wisconsin governor's business plan competition, which is uh, where we've seen uh, a fair amount of success. So there's just a few uh, different activities that we're doing. And what are the, some of the early results? Uh, what's happening uh, on that front? And first off, um, we have seen our enrollment uh, skyrocket. If, when I, uh, if you go back uh, about 10 years, we were serving about 200 students a year, all business majors. Uh, we made changes. We said we want this to be, help the, support the entire campus. And uh, this year, we're probably going to, that number is going to move up to closer to 1,700, with the majority of the students coming from outside of the business school. So big change, big growth, and a different uh, type of student that are there. Some students are majoring in entrepreneurship. Some are getting a certificate in entrepreneurship, which is available through the entire school. Some, this is their one class they're ever going to take in entrepreneurship, but they have an interest in it. And we're striving to provide them some of the information, some of the knowledge, so that they can be inspired, but also be more successful if they do decide to launch a business and move it, it forward. And there are a few um, local entrepreneurs that some of you may have either read about or, or know personally uh, that have uh, come, come through the program in different areas. Uh, if we look at some of our local entrepreneurs, just over the last few years, they've actually raised over 50 million in venture capital, which is a pretty darn significant number. It's, uh, you know, the, the real important thing is how, much, how successful they are, but an uh, early predictor of a good idea is when you get investors that are writing big checks, that's a good sign. Uh, that shows some promise. And a couple of these have also entered uh, the Wisconsin Governor's Business Plan competition and uh, done uh, quite well. Uh, Blue Diagnostics uh, is a saliva-based fertility test that uh, two years ago won uh, the Governor's Business Plan competition. And that is uh, out of, I think, they had 200, between, typically 250 to 300 entries each year. So really, uh, being, it's an impressive feat for anyone to win that competition. Just this last year, 30% of the finalists were UW affiliated, almost all of them either students or recent alumni. So we're seeing that as being one of the big uh, drivers of where there's a lot of uh, activity. Uh, some other startups that are either here or anywhere in the country slash world uh, that some logos, I uh, put stars on those that have ended up being finalists in the governor's business plan over the last few years. So a really good, um, good number there as well of people that have had uh, strong, you know, per strong performance and have made uh, great inroads into launching uh, their businesses. Uh, we could, uh, I could spend you know, lots of time talking about uh, different examples. Um, and they, but interesting enough, they run the gamut from a short Stack Eats, a restaurant on State Street, which uh, many of you have probably eaten at. If not, you should. They're really good food. And uh, our couple uh, students that uh, had a passion for that. Uh, to some very high-tech companies here that are university research uh, that's being spun out. And, and part of that is we've often found that a professor is less likely to leave the university to launch a business because they've got tenure, they, they've worked really hard to become a professor, all kinds of very good reasons, but a grad student may look at this and say, I would love to be an entrepreneur. I'm more than willing to devote my time and effort to take this technology that we've been working on in the lab and try to launch a business uh, from that. And there are ideas here that are revolutionizing cancer treatment, that are uh, improving energy efficiency, that are improving operations of hospitals and healthcare in general, making it more efficient. Uh, all sorts of different ideas that we see uh, the students launching uh, businesses uh, here. So very uh, exciting to see what the future holds for these uh, different ideas. I also did say, though, most people aren't going to start a business at graduation, and nor should they. Uh, they. The pathway is often to go to work for a business, learn some skills, build up uh, some knowledge, 
and maybe even some money, uh, so you can launch your business later in your career. So part of our training, we feel, helps make them a better employee uh, for a business, and will make them a more successful employee in that uh, business, whatever their major might be, that this training is going to help them. And we're seeing very good uh, results from uh, companies. Here's some Wisconsin companies that have hired our grads over the last uh, few years. And it's an impressive list with a wide range of some high tech, some you know not at all uh, too technology oriented, but still wanting more of that innovation gene, if you will, in the company. But we also have students that go all over the world uh, and all over the country uh, to use these skills. And the list uh, is even broader, but I just pulled a few of the names of where some of these students are ending up at some you know, really uh, impressive companies uh, anywhere in the world. And uh, these are often students that we're inviting back uh, to talk about uh, their innovation and uh, in a few years are, are likely to start a business. Uh, this is probably the most exciting aspect of uh, what we've seen to date because I mentioned most of uh, entrepreneurs aren't going to get started until they're 40. And we've been, we made this change about seven years ago. Uh, to expand, dramatically expand our reach uh, on the campus. So it's still probably um, another 10 years before we see the real fruits of uh, this change with these entrepreneurs and what they do. Uh, but these early results in seeing what people, what the students have already done is uh, quite promising. And it's a, a real credit to the caliber of these, uh, the students and what, they have, what they're learning, uh, both to either start a business today, become a great employee, and I'm very excited personally to see what the future holds for them. I think there are lots of uh, great things that they will do, and it is also one of those things that I'm very you know, blessed in this role, is you see what people are working on are really focusing on making this world a better place. You know, these entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in general, are trying to solve a problem. And having such en high energy, bright, young students that are focused on solving these problems in creative and innovative ways uh, gives me a great deal of optimism uh, for the future and uh, where they're going to take uh, their ideas both now and uh, as their careers progress and go forward. So that's... Uh, all I have is for prepared remarks. I wanted to save a few minutes uh, for Q&A uh, because I have been warned, actually, that uh, there's a lot of good questions here. Yes? Oh, this is a mic. The programs that you mentioned, the boot camp and the, yeah. uh, some of the other ones, are those just for enrolled students, or do you open that up to uh, invitations? Or? Yeah, um, most of what I have talked about today are for enrolled students. Uh, there are other, there definitely are lots of activities that the UW puts on that are open to the community. Speakers, uh, the Small Business Development Center is very much focused on people across uh, the region. But most of what I talked about, if you were a student at the UW today. Prosody with Minnesota. In Will that work to get uh, somebody in? If somebody's in the business oh. school or in school enrolled in Minnesota, U UM? I, I, probably not. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> they transfer. Mike? Dan, thanks for coming. I yeah. uh, wonder if there's a correlation. You said most uh, people have eight jobs before they're 30. Yeah. Uh, and you're saying a typical entrepreneur is about 40 years old. In the past, if you worked for one company, you felt some loyalty there. Do you think this turnover is, is feeding this process a little bit? Yeah, I, I mean, good question. I, I think it's definitely uh, the fact that if you're a student now and you look at your parents and you know, they're your friend's parents, uh, especially the last recession, you know, no one, it, they're very likely they've had this lifetime employment. And so you've seen someone that uh, has had to find a new job, has had to reinvent themselves. So we really push students to be, think more entrepreneurially about their career, that they're going to have to um, own that. Uh, they can't count on a company uh, to take care of that for them any longer. Yes. Well, my first reaction is that this entrepreneurship program you have 
is just one more wonderful face of this really special university we have in Madison. And we just keep hearing about all that it means. And so go Wisconsin. And my question is, what would you like from us? I mean, do you want just understanding? Uh, are there ways for Rotarians to invest in what you're doing? Are there investment funds for people coming out of your program? How, how yeah. can we get involved? Oh. Thank you for asking. That's a wonderful, uh, wonderful question. Yes, <laughs> uh, you know there there are many ways, and I we definitely have uh, lots of, of funds, uh, lots of opportunities to engage uh, in different facets of our entrepreneurial platform. Uh, all can be found on the Wisconsin Center website uh, that range from. Is sponsoring events to helping support the program uh, and scholarships and, and the like. So uh, that's always appreciated because many, I'd say the classes are something that's probably covered under uh, what we would, that's what the university sponsors. All those special activities that I mentioned, uh, that's all donor driven. You know, so that's, there's not anything there that's being uh, that, that wouldn't be possible without donors stepping up and uh, Making that investment, so that you know that's one thing. Also, uh, the other thing we always um, we always want more students, uh, and you know if you have you know friends, uh, kids of your own, or the like that have an interest in entrepreneurship, uh, checking out the UW and not not thinking they have to major in entrepreneurship, but they could be a comp sci, they could be econ, poli sci, whatever, and still get this is a you know thing a message we want to get out. Yes. Uh, n no, um, I, I, there's one exception. We do have actually one of our uh, gen biz classes, which is a uh, large class for that includes entrepreneurship and some other business skills that just recently moved online. Uh, in fact, you saw that little dip one year. That was as we re-engineered one of these classes because uh, last time I taught it, it had 270 students, you know, packed the room. And we feel there's more demand, so we're moving that one to online so we can serve, right now, all of campus, and longer term, probably, you know, maybe more of the state. Uh, now that you've sold your program, okay. um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Parse Now? How, how, did, how did you become an entrepreneur? Oh, okay. Um, well, that's uh, I've, uh, actually Mike, who took me out my first uh, day there for a burger, uh, in fact. Uh, he, Probably doesn't remember that, but I, I do. Um, it was uh, Parts Now was a computer printer parts distributor, and when I joined, it was a uh, oh, twenty-five million in sales. And then after uh, our, uh, the owner decided he wanted to sell it, uh, so I let a management buyout and bought out uh, the founder uh, with these private equity sponsors uh, and became the CEO at that point. And then we grew it and uh, did a follow-on acquisition of a much larger company and got it up to north of 400 million in sales. And then uh, it was, you know, sold out and had the, uh, it always wanted to teach at the UW and did that. So it was a, a very, uh, kind of being the CEO and uh, being uh, w awake in the middle of the night uh, thinking about the business uh, is something I can very much relate to uh, entrepreneurs. Hi, Dan, Rick Kiley. Um, I'd like to build on Dick's question and ask what we as a state can be doing to foster more entrepreneurship, because I, my mm -hmm. understanding is that as a state, Wisconsin uh, is not all that we might hope it might be in this respect. Yeah, and, and I think uh, there's a lot of debate over the statistics, but um, while I don't believe we're 50th out of 50, I also would say, you know, we're, we're not, I don't think we're top 10. We're, you know, we're not as high as the Rotary Club is. Uh, and, and that's our aspiration, is to be ranked as high as the Madison Rotary uh, in this. I would love that, actually. Uh, in, and there's, there's many different aspects to that. I think um, part of it is uh, the culture, that we have historically had a fairly risk-averse culture here in Wisconsin relative to some other states. When you spend time in California in particular, you know, people there are very quick to uh, talk about their failures. And you know, here that's, uh, that's not uh, something we uh, embrace or brag about uh, at all. And it's probably, uh, if you look at entrepreneurship, statistics, statistics show that half of them will, uh, half of new businesses will fail in five years. 
So, and if you're doing these high risk entrepreneurs, it's probably even more likely. So having more of a culture embracing uh, that risk, uh, uh, risk aspect of it. Um, I think there's also, uh, you know, it, the Wisconsin Technology Council has focused a lot on uh, bringing more capital to bear here in the state, and I think that helps uh, as well. So uh, there have been a lot of improvements in that area, but still probably have a long way to go. But I, I think it's a matter of kind of culture and the capital, because uh, we have a lot of great ideas here in the state. Moving them forward is the next big thing. Questions? Yeah. Okay, last question. Thank you, Dan. Um, high schools had the uh, DECA program that was extremely yeah. successful. And then you could uh, take some Capricorn classes in college. Did this replace the, uh, kind of replace the DECA program, or is the DECA still very active in the collegiate level? Um, DECA at the collegiate level, at least in Madison, is a student org that's still very active uh, and uh, in involved in that. So I wouldn't say it's replaced it at all. It's probably more of just some, it's a, that's a student org of, and many of our people that are majoring in entrepreneurship probably belong to it uh, and are active in that. So more of symbiotic. Good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much, Dan. Have a fabulous afternoon. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>